www.sunstrategy.com. Hi, this is Chris again looking at the upcoming July 31st uh, trading session on Thursday. And you can see I have the economic calendar in front of you. Really, we start out the day pretty uh, quietly in Australia. Not a whole lot going on. I mean, you have to keep in mind that we just had the RBA's decision, the minutes, etc. All of this will pale in comparison to that. So I would expect a fairly quiet beginning to the session. After that, we have Japanese housing starts. Probably not going to be a market mover unless, of course, it's a lot worse than is expected. And quite frankly, negative 11.5% with a previous of negative 15%. Really not much to, to smile at as far as that's concerned. For my money, really, the day doesn't really start until we get to the European Union. You can see right at the top, we have unemployment change in Germany, and you might as well look at that as Europe itself. We do have the Italian employment rate, five minutes later, not going to be a major factor. Uh, an hour later, we have the CPI coming out of the Eurozone, and that, of course, will be important if it's a major miss. Um, we have the uh, Eurozone employment rate, that, of course, can have uh, an effect on the markets as well. So we have about an hour and a half time frame here um, that the markets will definitely have a lot to digest. All of this should move the euro uh, and should probably move the uh, European stock indices with a special emphasis uh, right now, in my opinion, on this particular number, the German unemployment change and the DAX. Uh, the uh, CPI, of course, will have an effect on the DAX and the EU as well, and it will also affect like the CAC and the IBEX and some of the other indices, but the DAX is probably where we're going to see most of the action because a lot of this is German specific. With that being said, once we get out of there and the Canadians come online, we have the GDP, gross domestic uh, product, year over year, it's supposed to be at 2.3%. This will be a essentially Canadian dollar play, in my opinion. Maybe Toronto Stock Exchange, if you have the ability uh, to trade that. Uh, at this point in time, I still expect the, the DAX to probably be the market that will move the most, just because it's got so much in the way of moving parts. Going a little lower down the uh, menu here, you can see we have initial jobless claims. Normally, this is one that can move the markets, the stock markets in the United States. I don't think it's going to today, though, only because we have non-farm payroll the next day, and that's obviously going to be much more important. Uh, we do have natural gas inventory numbers, storage change, and that can be a mover of the natural gas market itself. The natural gas market has been absolutely pummeled. This could be an excuse for a bounce, but I still expect that market to be very bearish. I expect $4 to be almost uh, unbreachable at this point in time. Keep in mind, though, some of these announcements, especially when you get into the U.S. and Canada, are probably going to have a little bit more of a muted reaction than typical, only because of the non-farm payroll numbers the next day. Looking at the charts, you can see that I have the dollar yen up in front of you, and it had an explosive day. Now, a lot of that has to do with the GDP numbers out of America coming out stronger than anticipated. And, of course, we slammed into 103, which is the top of the wider consolidation area as I zoom out. You can see that this is an important level, uh, but we pulled back a little bit, and that makes sense. Non-farm payroll normally moves this market pretty drastically, uh, so the fact that there'd be a little trepidation about hanging on to this trade does not surprise me. I think the pullbacks will offer value, especially around 102.30. Uh, if we can get some type of support in this general vicinity, I would be uh, long of this particular currency pair uh, buying calls above. The British pound has uh, fallen below the 170 level uh, a couple, for a couple days now, uh, but we also have uh, the 169 level, which I had suggested would be the bottom of the support. We did breach that during the session. We've bounced over it. I think it's very possible uh, that we could continue lower, but there is so much noise below. At this point in time, short-term traders will probably come in and pick this up a little bit. Looking at the euro dollar, you can see that we fell again uh, right into the 134 level, but we bounced and formed a hammer. This hammer suggests 
that the market's probably going to continue going higher a bit. I would expect some type of retrace. We've just sold off so hard. Uh, Short-term buying opportunity, but I suspect 135 is going to be very difficult to crack. And don't kid yourselves, Friday being non-farm payroll numbers will, of course, have a massive effect on this market. So. That being the case, I expect short-term bounce on a break of the top of the hammer. Uh, short-term play at best, 134.50 uh, would have me, uh, that would be enough for me to say, okay, time to take profits, get out. So buying calls to the upside, uh, or you know, maybe uh, wagering on a binary going higher, that might be the way to go. On the other hand, if we break the bottom of this hammer, that's extraordinarily bearish, and we probably will fall directly to one spot, 3.3 at that point. And finally, looking over at the S&P 500, you can see I still have the same channel uh, kind of sloppily drawn here. Sorry about that. Uh, on this chart, and you can see that we did break down below it and we bounced above it. I think this was in reaction to Federal Reserve's minutes basically suggesting that they still see a lot of slack in the economy and uh, even though they did kind of tighten up a little bit as far as the quantitative easing, they pulled back a little bit. Really, it's not that much. We're doing it gradually. Um, I still think non-farm payroll is really what this market's waiting on. Probably going to see a little bit of a drift higher during the session today. Short-term traders will probably love this market. You have a clear support level. Um, but uh, other than that, a couple scalps maybe to the upside might be about what we're looking at. And that has been a look at the Thursday, July 31st trading session.